Hi, G. John Rowe from Above God's Name channel. Again, coming to you from the home of Howard Elseth. And he is the curator and collector of the 1611 King James Bible Museum in Garrison, Texas. And joining us today will be his great pal, and whom I have had the pleasure to get to know, spending a lot of time with as well, Brother John. John, pronounce your last name for him. Melanson. Melanson. Good to be with you. Great to have you with us. I am in the sun position. Before me, I have two men who are in the father position. The dynamic that the Lord has in the church is the paradigm of the father and the son. And by being here and having the opportunity to spend so much time with you both, mm, I'm just taking in so much as a son, taking in so much. Howard, our audience knows uh, a little bit about you from our previous video. John, uh, you have been walking with the Lord Jesus Christ for decades and decades. Yes, sir. You have a tremendous uh, deposit in you of the glory of God and of the treasuries of God in Christ. And I want to talk on this segment of our video series about something very specific and specific for a reason, two reasons. One, each of us here have gone through Bible college and or Bible seminary. Yes, sir. Uh, I've gone through extensive upper division Bible college and seminary classes. Howard, you have had the same and then, uh, Brother John, you not only have the same, you've actually gone on in your ministry and taught yes, in sir. many seminary locations on seminary level. Yes, sir. And having the breadth of experience, especially combined breadth that the three of us have, I want to talk about the role that the seminary and Bible colleges has played in the covering up and ultimately demise and outcast of the King James Bible. This should be a conversation we should not have to be having because the King James Bible, as all three of us here are soundly standing upon, is the perfect words of God. And yet, in the church, what are we seeing today? We are not seeing the proper place of the Word of God in the midst of the church. What on earth, and I emphasize earth because it's something that heaven would never do, what on earth is happening to the church with the seminaries and colleges removing the King James Bible? John, what would you like to share in this? I think the first thing I'd like to share is way back in 1979, I heard one of the professors, a, a nationally known professor, say to one of the classes, now always preach from the King James Bible, but study from these versions. My problem with that is they don't say the same thing. Absolutely. They do not say the same thing at all. So what we're doing is deceitful, in my opinion, to present a face of we are using God's word, but in reality, we are using man's word who tells us what they think God's word says. We need to go right back to God's word. And I have seen that now uh, within modern um, seminaries, within modern Bible colleges, they are at the point where they don't care which Bible you use. So there is no right or wrong answer in many cases. It's what is your interpretation of this? So I think we've got a real problem. We, we have lost our direction, our foundation, and we no longer see exactly what God is saying, but what man is saying. I see a calcifying over God's people. Yes, sir. And it's coming down autocratically from the leaders in the Bible colleges and the seminaries. 
and I want to speak frankly. Now, you're currently yes, a sir. professor at seminary. Yes, sir. Yet, I'm going to speak frankly, knowing that I have the safety to do so, because you are there, but you are there standing on the perfection of the King James Bible. It seems to me that Satan has gone after two main things. One is going to be the youth. We see that with the LGBTQ agenda, trying to get at our seed, our youth. But I also see that very stealthfully, he's gone after those who are leading in the teaching arena, having the teaching authority, the seat of authority over those youth. So he's, he's coming from both ends to close in. And these institutions are then calcifying those who are under their tutelage, calcifying them, making them without oil to be able to have the flexibility to come into that King James Bible and receive the depth of the revelations that are going on in the King James Bible. They've been calcified to it. The question is, do we have an inerrant word of God? That is the question. And I have the answer, you have the answer, and you have the answer. Yes, absolutely. The King James, um, the 1611 and the daughters of the 1611, yes. that King James Bible is that sure word, that, that foundation we have. When we leave the foundation, the rest of the house cannot stand. So we are seeing this reflected in our, our churches of today. We are seeing that we no longer have a stand there. People no longer participate in the way they used to. They, instead of participating in the church and every person sharing in the church out of the word of God, instead they are accepting what is said during the preaching. And they're not bringing anything to the service. So in Ephesians, it tells us we should all bring our song, our hymn, whatever God has given us the previous week, but they no longer do that. That's just like within the early church, there were three people standing up front during the message. One is delivering the message, but one on each side, and that's still done in today's synagogues, and some of them in Israel. And those two at any time are able to stop and say, wait, there's a mistake. And they want to cling to the word of God. That was removed under Constantine. It was either easier to control one leader in the church rather than having multiples that guard each other. So when that happened, within uh, historically that happened, uh, we have one person who then becomes the authority. Now we sit back and let him be the authority. In many ways, that's like almost a dictator. So we no longer share the word of God. Instead, we're told what to believe. Do you see the seminaries and the colleges being a choke point where Satan's gotten a hold of the church to destroy that authority that you're speaking of? Absolutely. If the young man has no sure foundation... He goes out, and he then can take his message off an internet, out of a commentary, from wherever he gets it, rather than getting it directly from the Word of God. So I see them sharing things that are not necessarily the Word of God. It's like this. You have politicians, you have actors, you have people all through this world who are getting upset because they're misquoted whether it's out of context or whatever. But how do you think God feels when he's misquoted? Well, it's hard not to misquote when you have 200 translations of the Bible. So Absolutely. if you are quoting another translation, even if you're quoting word for word that translation, what you're not quoting is the standard, the word of God. That's correct. And seminaries and Bible colleges, not only are they to blame for this, but I think one of the very strong proofs that they're to blame is how hard it is 
to reach them with the truth. I think because they are the blame, there is a very, very strong hardness about them. Yes, sir. Because when we are the one responsible for something, we harden our own heart. And God's really going to have to be the one to soften the hearts of these professors at seminary, teachers at Bible college. Will it happen? Will it not happen? God will have mercy upon whom he has mercy. He'll have compassion upon whom he has compassion. Howard, if the foundations be destroyed... What can the righteous do? What can the righteous do? And that's where we are. And that's what the house of God is doing to itself. Because these seminary professors and Bible teachers in colleges, they're destroying the foundation. Now, this is a foundation that God has entrusted into the hands of of the Western portion of the body of Christ. Israel had the oracles of God. When they forfeited those oracles, those oracles came to the Gentiles. And when those Gentiles brought forth the New Testament, we had seed, we had growth. Ultimately, we had maturity placed in the hands of the Western portion of the body of Christ. The English-speaking body of Christ was in tenor, of the word of God, perfect, matured. And if those foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Howard, tell me about seminary, what you're seeing, your forecast, what's in your heart. Just roll with it, please. Let, let me just give a little background. You introduced us talking about the museum, but we, if we could step back one step, is this place is actually the, the literal title of this place is Holy Bible Ministries. Now, I went to Bible college, I went to college, I went to seminary, I got talked out of the King James Bible, and uh, I started in the New American Standard Bible. They had the chokehold over you. Yes, and uh, I didn't realize, it took me almost 40 years to realize, I pastored about 17 years in one location, then I moved to another, I started a church, then I moved uh, to another location. We had a beautiful building, started a church, five years into the program, and I'll never forget, it was a Sunday morning. It's just like the Lord spoke to me, not audibly, but in my heart. And he says, you don't know what a church is. You don't even know what the Bible is. Mm. He says, you need to quit this and go into the wilderness someplace and find out what book is the Bible I, and, and what a real church is. And I'll never forget, there was a lady on the front row, she started crying. She says, we've been looking for a church like this for the longest time, and now you're moving. And But I said, I don't have a choice, because God said, go and stop, and I want to show you some things. And, and then a friend of mine, uh, Jack from uh, Massachusetts, he, he sent me a 1611 Bible, a, 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 a expressed image of one, and I sat it on the shelf for five years thinking it was just collectible. And then I heard a speaker in Indianapolis say, don't use anything but a King James Bible. And I thought, well, and, and I had a, several tables in the lobby because I was one of the speakers at this conference. I spoke there nine years in a row. And uh, I had, I think, at least three tables of books. People would come up to me and say, what do you think of that guy? I think he's a little crazy. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I've been to seminary and I learned about the Greek. I've had four years of Greek. I've had Hebrew. I've studied at a number of different institutions, University of Minnesota, Cerritos College. I've studied at, I sh maybe shouldn't say all the names of the college, but, but uh, at another number of places, plus a seminary, and studied in Germany and studied in Israel. And I thought I knew everything. But when he said that, I said, he's crazy. But then one day, something just spoke to me. Take a, six, a King James Bible and preach out of it. I'll never forget the first time I preached out of that 1611 Bible, or King James Bible, and I'd preached out of it before because I got talked out of it. But I preached out of one, and a person came up to me and said, what did you do different? I said, nothing other than I just 
swap Bibles. I swapped from the New American Standard to the King James. She said it, it, it was totally different and unbelievable what you did. It's like you were a different person. I thought, well, that's interesting. So I kept doing that. And then God eventually led me to the original 1611 Bible. And, and that it, it's just amazing the journey I've been on. And then I began to realize when I look back at seminary, uh, when I went to seminary, like so many other students, I had this goal to really learn the Bible, to communicate it. But what I discovered, there's so many students, when they got out of seminary, they came there all excited to seminary when they graduated, they were frustrated. They didn't know what was what. Mm -hmm. And I was the same way. There's got to be something more. I'll never forget when the bishop of a, of a large, uh, well, I, actually, I don't know if I can say this, from the Methodist Church, and he was a wonderful man, and they were offering me a wonderful position. But I'll never forget, after he interviewed me uh, f for a position, he says, Howard, I, I want to ask you a question. This is off the record. What do you believe about the Bible? Not that it matters. Not that it, it matters. matters. Wow. This is a real touching a nerve for me. Yes. Oh. And, I, and, I, and I will single this out with pastors when I come across them as the Spirit leads me to them. You build every doctrine that you have on the Bible. Your Christology, yeah. your soteriology, your ecclesiology, ology, 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 ology. You build them all on the Bible, except for your doctrine of the Bible. They never go to the Word of God for that. And that's exactly what's being reflected in those words. Not that it matters? Yeah, Come some, on. Something happened in me that day. I walked out of his office and I said, I'm not going to be a part of this church. I'm not going to be a part of any church till I start figuring out what's in this book. You, I've gotten to know in the last several days, John Melanson as well, I've gotten to know in the last several days. You're a genuinely humble man. Genuinely. It's not artificial. It's love and friendship. Real brotherhood and I can see how God has had so much mercy on you both especially okay John being in a seminary environment the pressure on you to conform to the image of the world and by that I mean New American Standard Bible image of the world ESV Bible image of the world New King James Bible, image of the world. You've had so much pressure, and yet, not only have you not conformed to that, but God has used it, the coming through, overcoming those false Bibles, to polish you both, to be so full of love and compassion and wisdom and knowledge at the same time. Really, God's mercy is upon you. Now God's mercy is upon me as well. And I often say on the channel, in the teaching, if you have eyes to see that God has finished the King James Bible and you are able to put your faith in every word of God, you have God's mercy. That's the only way a man's going to see this truth. Let's wrap this up with one um, short mini topic within our topic. What is the consequence of this to the United States? That these seminaries have strongholded God's Word and are keeping it, the King James Bible, from the lives of His children. It's all summed up in one word, apostasy. Thank you. What I've seen as I went through Bible college, college, and seminary, not one time did they talk about the two lineages of Bibles. Not one time did they talk about how the King James came to be and what the value it is. And I've done some looking at the Reformation area, and it's, it's really interesting how 
the world seemed to be getting better and better the more the King James Bible and the English part of it was spread around the world yes. under the British Empire. And since the modern Bibles have come and how they've changed, not just the Bible, they changed the language that brought us the Bible. And w what has happened is the world, you just look at America s since the modern Bible started flooding the market. It's gone downhill further and further and further. They often cite, well, when prayer was taken out of the schools, that's when it took place. But it took place much earlier. And it took place in the pulpit. Because whatever, uh, a friend of mine, Dr. Harry Kahn, used to always say, whatever is in the pulpit, 50 to 100 years later or thereabouts, ends up in the society. And the pulpits are coming from the seminaries. Right. That is Correct. exactly right. the association that needs to right. be made. So are you saying America is going downhill? Very much so. What viewer is not going to agree with that? And are you saying that there is a direct association between the seminaries putting pastors in the pulpits who are from the top down robbing the flock of the perfect word of God having an effect on the decline of America? Are you saying that? That's a good summary of exactly what's happening. As a seminary professor, you're saying that? Yes, sir. And uh, Howard, Howard, are you saying that as well? I, I went to seminary to learn Bible, and I found out we only had about, in three years, about four or five classes on the Bible. The rest was how do you raise offerings, how do you bring people in, and how do you develop. And, and very little was about the theological, and none was about the two lineages of Bible, and especially nothing was about this, the King James Bible. I've had over 150, almost 200 uh, units of upper division Bible, and I can agree with you 100%. I was never told about the two lineages of the Word of God, right. which really there's only one lineage of the Word of God. There really is only so one. Right. We're talking about the lineage from for the Father, and we're talking about the Antichrist lineage. Well, let me say one thing that uh, and maybe I shouldn't say, but, but uh, I kind of liken these new Bibles to rat poison. Rat poison is 98% to 99% food, real food. You don't have to change. Satan doesn't have to change much in a book. But it's the poison that's, uh, the food is the bait, and it's the poison that kills the rat. And it's just that 1% to 2%. And if you change scriptures or leave them out, and of course God warns us about don't leave it out, don't add. If you change just a little bit, it can change the whole spirit of the Bible. It can. And the life. And or the book called the Bible. Yes. And that's really the best case scenario. Yeah. The worst case scenario is what I fear. Offending God. Oh, I am, by I daring, I By daring to change His Word. His Word. Gentlemen, we're going to wrap this segment up. If you are a pastor and you've gone to seminary, I believe you can relate to this, but the temptation for you will be to hide from the piercing light that we are bringing forth here. You are a man who needs mercy, and you ought to be praying for mercy, not for more textual, uh, critical analysis. Mercy. Pray for mercy to see the King James Bible is the perfect words of God. Amen. Amen. Amen.